Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Beatles Forever. I love trivia and facts, and so I'll continue to do some videos about the fun facts regarding Beatle albums. Well, today we're going to learn facts regarding the album with the Beatles. So this whole album holds a special place in my heart because it's the first time that I heard the Beatles. Uh, my mom had bought the album, and it, and it makes a great memory for me, especially now, because recently she passed away. And uh, so... This album really means a lot to me. It's an album that they have more time with. The Beatles have more time to work on this album. Uh, with the Beatles, which was recorded over seven sessions across three months. Chart success. With the Beatles replaced Please Please Me at number one spot, and it stayed there for 21 weeks. Combined with the success of their debut, according to the Beatlesbible.com, they achieved a continuous run of 51 weeks at the top of the charts. So that's really impressive. And they were with the Beatles, spent a whole whopping 51 weeks at the, on the top 20. So George Harrison contributes his first song. George Harrison wrote his first song, and it was included in this album, and the song is Don't Bother Me. So George Harrison wrote the song while he was sick in bed at a hotel room in Bournemouth, England, where the Beatles were playing some shows during the summer of 1963. He considered it an exercise in whether he could write a song, later saying, at least it showed me all I need to do was keep on writing, and then maybe eventually I would write something good. And one of the lyrics was, so go away, leave me alone, don't bother me. It wasn't the typical Beatles song, but this was George's twist, including some negativity to a song. So George did the double-track lead vocal and lead guitar, the 1962 Gritch 6122 Country Gentleman, John Lennon played the rhythm of guitar with the 1958 Rickenbacker 325 and the tambourine, and Paul McCartney played the bass in the 1961 Hofner 500-1. Wood Block Star played the drums in the loose-skinned Arabian Bongo, and George Martin, he was producing the record. <laughs> the cover for With the Beatles, according to Wikipedia, impressed with Robert Freeman's black-and-white picture of John Coltrane, Epstein invited the photographer to create the cover image. Harrison later said that, whereas the cover of Please Please Me had been crap, their second LP was the beginning of us being actively involved in the Beatles' artwork. The first one where we thought, hey, let's get artistic. The group asked Freeman to take inspiration from pictures their friend Astrid Kirchner had taken in Hamburger between 1960 and 1962, featuring the band members in half shadow and not smiling. To achieve this result on 22nd of August, 1963, Freeman photographed them in a dark corridor of the Palace Court Hotel in Bournemouth, where the band were playing a summer residency at the local Gamont Cinema. To fit the square format of the cover, he put Star in the bottom right corner since he was the last to join the group. He was also the shortest, <laughs> so McCartney described the result as very moody, adding people think he must have worked at it forever and ever, but it was an hour. He sat down, took a couple of rolls, and he had it. EMI objected to the fact that the Beatles were not smiling. It was only after George Martin intervened as head of Parlamore that the cover portrait was approved. Freeman was paid 75 pounds for his work, which was three times the fee the first offered by the EMI. So the guitars used in with the Beatles is the Gretsch Country Gentleman, the Rickham Backer 325, the Hofner 500-1, and the Gibson J-160E. So that's interesting to know. Okay, on the song, It Won't Be Long, according to Wikipedia, John Lennon claimed that this song in 1971 and 1980, and in around 1995, Paul McCartney described the song as dominated by John, but written in collaboration. John mainly sang it, so I expect that it was his original idea, but we both sat down and wrote it together. The chorus is a play on the words Be, be Long and Belong, uh, the song features early Beatles trademarks such as the calling response, yeah, yes, and scaling guitar riffs. John Lennon in his final interview told Playboy magazine that the song was the beginning of a wider audience for Beatles music than the youthful throngs that had fervently followed them from their Liverpool clubbing days. Okay, the next song, All, All I've Got to Do, this song was written by John Lennon, and he said he was trying to imitate Smokey Robinson. And according to Wikipedia, Lennon said it was written specifically for the American market because the idea of calling a girl on the phone was unthinkable to British youth in the early 1960s. 
For instance, Lennon said in an interview regarding No Reply, I had the image of walking down the street and seeing her silhouetted in the window and not answering the phone, although I have never called a girl on the phone in my life because phones weren't a part of the English child's life. So it took 14 takes to get the song right, though eight of these were false starts, and they also recorded an overdub, uh, which became Take 15, the version used on the LP. All My Lovin', according to Song Facts, this was the first time that Paul McCartney wrote the words to a song before the music. The song began as a poem he conceived while he was shaving one morning, thinking about his girlfriend, Jane Asher, whom he had met when she was interviewed, when she interviewed him for the magazine Radio Times. He wrote the music that night, and he originally envisioned it as a country and western song. And the guitar solo that George Harrison did was influenced by Chet Atkins, and Chet was one of George's idols when he was learning how to play the guitar. And John Lennon said he was always proud of the rhythm guitar part he contributed to the song for this recording. Next up is Little Child. This song was written by John and Paul, and they had the idea that it was going to be a song that Ringo could sing. According to Paul, Ringo didn't have a large vocal range, but he could handle things with a good cambrio and spirito if they were nice and simple. It had to be something he could get behind. If he couldn't picture it, you were in trouble. And this one was written, co-written with John. So Paul McCartney told that to Barry Miles in the book many years from now. And the next one, Hold Me Tight. This song was written by Paul, John said. That was Paul's. Maybe I stuck some bits in there. I don't remember. It was a pretty poor song, and I was never really interested in, in it either way. John Lennon, 1980, All Were Same, uh, by David Sheff. <laughs> so, Paul, I mean, John could be a little... Uh, critical. <laughs> he really didn't like that song, it sounds like. Um, it took nine takes to record the song, and it sounds like Paul wasn't too impressed by the song. He wrote calling it a work song, and he didn't really have a memory of it. So, like, I don't understand why they didn't like the song, because it's really a good one. It's a rocking song that makes you want to sing along to it. <laughs> Next, I Want to Be Your Man. Paul and John wrote this song for the Rolling Stones originally. Paul said, uh, we were friends with them, and I just thought, I want to be your man. It would be good for them. I knew they did Bo Diddley stuff, and they made a good job of it. The Stones released it as a single, and it never went on as a stu- on a studio album. But John was blunt when he stated later, it was a throwaway. The only two versions of the song were Ringo and the Rolling Stones. That shows how much importance we put on it. We weren't going to give them anything great, right? <laughs> John Lennon said that in 1982. David Chef and All We Were Saying book. So with the Beatles was a little bit like the Please Please Me album. It had some original tunes, some covers, but this time the Beatles gave it even harder rock songs than they did before, and they had a great energy with this album, and you could tell they were enjoying the beginnings of the Beatles' success. They were energized and trying to copy the success of their first album, which they did. That must have really inspired them for the next album. But I love all the Beatles albums, but this one holds a special place in my heart because it's the first time I got to hear their songs. I was just five, but it was enough for me to know that this band would always be my favorite. I really hope that everybody's been having a good day today, and I also hope that if you enjoyed the video, you could give it a thumbs up, because that would show I'm on the right track on the videos and that if you enjoy watching them. So please tune in again soon for another episode of The Beatles Forever. Thank you. Bye.